it's Tim Sheets for TechSpot here, and this is the LG G5. Of course, LG's new flagship smartphone for 2016, succeeding the G4 from last year. The company has included quite a lot of really interesting features in the G5 to try and make it stand out from the crowd. Some of these things are hits, and some of these things are misses, and we'll be going through all of these in today's review. We'll start with the good stuff, though, and on the back of the G5, you see something that's pretty unusual, and that is two cameras sitting there. One of these is a pretty typical smartphone sensor, 16 megapixels as an f1.8 lens and optical image stabilization. This camera produces fantastic images. It's very similar to the camera we got in the G4, which means that it's great in strong lighting. That depth of field is fantastic from the f1.8 lens. It's reasonably sharp. It's surprisingly good in low light, although it falls behind the Galaxy S7 in some of its features, like its speed of focusing, even though it has laser autofocus, it's a little bit slow there and also its mid-range performance and some indoor lighting is not as good as you get in the S7 but in general it's a pretty impressive camera. The other camera though and this is where it gets really interesting is an 8 megapixel sensor with a wide angle f2.4 lens. LG claims 135 degree field of view from this camera which makes it really suitable for wide angle landscape shots. I actually found myself using this camera quite a lot. It's not one of those gimmicky features like you typically see with smartphone cameras. This is actually very usable. If you're out and about and you want to take a lovely landscape shot of some mountains or if you're in the city and you really want to get that cityscape in, you will be using this wide angle camera to do so because it really captures quite a lot more than the standard camera from the point of view that you're standing from. Inside the G5 is a Snapdragon 820 SoC with 4 gigabytes of RAM and 32 gig of internal storage. I was very impressed with the performance that the G5 provides. It's quite a lot higher than we saw in the G4 with its Snapdragon 808. It significantly outperforms the Snapdragon 810. It doesn't throttle nearly as much in games. It's actually really impressive in that aspect. Performance is great around the operating system. The graphics performance is the best that I've seen from any smartphone, and that includes the iPhone 6S. It really comes out of the blocks here with that 1440p display. Produces fantastic GPU performance. CPU performance is also quite good from the new 4-core cryo CPU. It's probably a little bit slower than Samsung's new Exynos CPU, but in general, the performance between those two SoCs is very similar, so there's nothing really to complain about in terms of the Snapdragon 820 and the performance that the G5 provides. I was also reasonably impressed with the display on the LG G5. It's a 1440p IPS LCD, so it's really sharp and crisp. The one thing that really stands out from the crowd about this display is its fantastic peak brightness of 860 nits, makes it really easy to see this display outdoors. Also thanks to the low reflectivity glass and fantastic viewing angles, we're almost getting to AMOLED levels there. Really good black levels for an LCD produce a fantastic contrast ratio. Color quality, it's definitely oversaturated and vibrant so it's not particularly accurate and there's no real way to change the color performance of this display so for people looking to do you know, color critical work and really need that sRGB spectrum. You're not gonna get that from the G5, but I think most people will be pretty happy with how this display looks in general. And this brings me to some of the things that I didn't like as much about the G5. And we'll start with the design here. So this device is really comfortable and kudos to LG for making the curves around the edges fit really well into your hands. The choice of a 5.3 inch display is a perfect mix between usability and screen size. And I was quite happy with how easy it is to grip this device coming from something like the Galaxy S7 with its slippery glass. However, LG claims that this is a metal body and that's not really the truth. It is a plastic coated metal design that doesn't look or feel as good as true metal smartphones that we've seen like the HTC 10 and also like the Galaxy S7. I really would have preferred if LG included actual metal, just expose it, let us see the fantastic qualities of metal because the way that this device looks, it, it just isn't as good as we've seen from those premium devices that use metal in the way that it's intended to. There are a lot of great hardware features around the G5, like the USB-C port on the bottom that also includes quick charging 3.0. I love seeing USB-C on smartphones. The fingerprint sensor on the back is very responsive and accurate, and it doubles as a power button for better or worse. And I like the inclusion of a micro SD card slot to easily expand on the storage in this device. However, where the G5 really falls down, this is my biggest issue with the device overall, is the modular slot. This has been really highly touted about this device when it was released. People were going crazy about the fact that you can slide the bottom of the device out to reveal the battery, you can replace the battery, you can even replace the module at the bottom to include things like 
a very disappointing camera grip and an audio DAC that really, it just could have been included in the handset itself. The way that LG has disappointed with these modules is it's really frustrating and there was a lot of potential here to create compelling add-ons to the G5 but LG simply hasn't done this with this device and while I applaud them for going in new directions and trying things new I think the modular slot is just something that doesn't work. Even the removable battery I mean some people really like this feature of being able to hot swap batteries on the go but it's just a niche feature and the fact that you know, you need all this assembly to include the removable battery in here it has re resulted in a lower than expected battery capacity of just 2800 milliamp hours and that leads to reasonably disappointing battery life in the G5. I would have preferred LG to ditch the modular slot entirely, integrate the battery and make it a little bit larger to improve the battery life because I don't see many people actually hot swapping the battery on the go despite how cool the feature actually is. My final issue with the G5 is the software, which I just don't think is up to scratch for a flagship smartphone in 2016. A lot of inconsistencies in the design, really poor design choices that don't fit well with the rest of the visual style that they've gone with, some really poor interface cues that actually hide features. I don't want to see that ever on a smartphone of this caliber. And of course, bloatware applications and duplicate applications. These are things that shouldn't be included in a high-end device. It just adds confusion for users when they see those annoying pop-up dialogues asking you to switch between things like two gallery applications and even worse, two app stores. Why does LG have its own app store on here when there's the Play Store? There's just no reason for these issues to be present in the G5. I will give credit where credit is due. You can customize quite a lot of things about this device, including the home screen. You can install from LG's app store a completely different home screen that includes the app drawer, whereas the default one doesn't include the app drawer. Personally, I prefer having an app drawer, but it's just personal preference, and I like the fact that LG gives you the ability to change that. There are some skinning features that are quite comprehensive throughout this software. I like things like ringtone ID and a couple of the other features like memory management and cleanup tools that LG has included. But just in general, clean up your software LG and make it a little bit better, more close to what we see on Nexus devices. At the end of the day, I would class the G5 as a good device. There are a lot of things to like about this handset and there aren't any fundamental issues that will hamper people's enjoyment of it. However, I just can't see LG selling this device in any significant quantities because the Samsung Galaxy S7 is superior in a number of ways. The S7 has a much better, faster camera. It has longer battery life. It has a much better design that's also waterproof. And it's pretty similar to the G5, in a number of other aspects like including a micro SD card slot and fingerprint reader, similar performance and similar display. The only real standout to the G5 is the modular slot, which in my opinion is a disappointment and the wide angle camera. So in my opinion, these features aren't enough for me to recommend the G5 over the S7, which is superior in ways that count. So I hope you all enjoyed this review of the LG G5. Don't forget to take a look at the full review on TechSpot because we've got full benchmarks of performance, battery, and everything in there for you to take a look at. We'll be back on this YouTube channel for more video reviews in the near future, so don't forget to get subscribed. Thanks, guys. This has been a TechSpot video review.